Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Skylum Software released an update to Luminar Neo. They're calling this their spring update. In today's video, we're going to take a look at everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Luminar Neo. There are four new things in this release. I'm going to go over all of them in this video. In the description below this video, I'll have more information about each. Now, the first new thing I'm going to talk about is something they've added to the develop raw and develop tools. Of course, if you're working on a raw file, you'll have a develop raw tool. If you're working on a non raw file, you'll have a develop tool. Either way, if you roll that open, you'll notice that the top is auto adjust. And it's not, I guess, your typical auto adjust. You'll notice that when I press it, it will examine the image with AI and determine what it needs. And it did an adjustment. But it's important to know exactly what it does and what it doesn't do. It really doesn't do a lot. What it does is it will move three sliders if needed. It will move exposure, highlights, and shadows. You'll notice it didn't move the whites or black slider at all. And what it also will do if needed is it will adjust the tone curve slightly. And you notice with the tone curve, it did a slight adjustment there. So that's really all it does. What it's meant to do is to get your image in a better spot for you to do an edit on it. For example, with this image, if I go back to the before, you notice it's kind of washed out. The highlights are blown out. Um, it's an okay image, but now it's at a better point where I could probably more accurately get a better black and white point. I could better um, adjust color if needed and, and things like that, add texture. So it's meant to be a quick way to get you to a point where you could do a better edit on your image. Now, it doesn't do anything with white balance. For example, I have this image here. You can see that it's slightly crooked. It's um, very blue. But if I go to the develop raw and click auto adjust, it didn't take care of the white balance at all. It still only moved three sliders, exposure slightly, highlights and shadows. It didn't move the blacks and white sliders at all. If I go to the curves, it did do that curve adjustment slightly. I noticed on my Nikon RAW files, it almost always does that. The way I would uh, correct the white balance is I like to use curves to do it. If you watched any of my videos, I've demonstrated how I do this. For this specific image, I would go to the blue curve. I put a point right in the middle of the blue curve line there and just pull it down a little bit to pull the blue out of the image. And that's the way I would adjust the white balance. But now I'm in a much better place to do an edit uh, for this image. Um, I would probably like to crop it and straighten it up a little bit. And you get it more centered like that. And then I would get a white and black point. I would go back to my develop raw and I would go and open up the blacks and whites section. And the way I like to get a black and white point is I turn on the clipping indicators by tapping the J key. When the clipping indicators are on, if I move the white slider to the right and I go too far, I'll start to get red come into the image. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. And I usually don't like to blow out the highlights because if I print this, no detail would be there at all. As a matter of fact, no ink would get put down there at all. So I'll back this off until all that red dissipates. Similarly, similarly for the blacks slider, I'll move it to the left with the clipping indicators on. You'll see blue start to come on the screen. That means I'm crushing the shadows. If I print that, no detail is going to be there. It's just going to be black ink, but usually I don't mind doing that. Then I'll turn the clipping indicators off by tapping the J key. So you can see that it helps get you in a better point. And it's not going to do any cropping or anything or straightening. Like this image is uh, totally crooked, right? And again, if I go to develop raw and I tap the auto adjust uh, button, you can see it does an auto adjustment, but it didn't straighten it at all. But I'll tap that J key again and I'll get a white point. And then I'll get a black point. Tap the J key to turn it off. I'll go to the crop tool and I'll just... Uh, do a horizontal alignment like that. So I was able to actually do an edit on this relatively quickly just by using that auto adjust feature to get me close. And a lot of times you'll find if you have an image that is more properly exposed like this one, this is still an unedited RAW file, you'll, you'll notice it, it does barely anything. Uh, in this case, it didn't do much at all. 
Um, on some other images where you might have a lot of dynamic range in the scene and your camera was a actually able to capture it and you have a lot of dark areas and a lot of bright areas, then it might um, still get you to a closer place, but at night might not be exactly what you want. You could see overall, for me, this is a little bit too dark. I don't like the shadows adjustment. I could come in, maybe open up the black slider a little. But overall, I found that it works really well. And it's probably something when I'm, especially if I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to do a quick edit, something I use, I'd use because I don't always like the Enhance AI, what it does. Um, for example, on this image, maybe I would, but it, it's sometimes for me is a bit uh, too like over the top. So I'll revert this to the original and I'll go to Enhance AI and I'll move this to the right. You can see that if I'm trying to get the sky where I want it, then it's kind of brightening up everything else. And overall, it depends. You know, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. So it's just another, um, you know, tool that you have to hopefully uh, help you get a better edit overall. So that is new. Uh, again, it's in the develop and develop raw tools auto adjust. Another thing that is new is they um, redid the atmosphere AI tool that's in the landscape section. Uh, let me go to this image here. And I found it actually works really well. So if I go to atmosphere AI and I take the amount slider here, let me move it up. If I take this amount slider and I start pushing it to the right, you'll see I'll start to introduce fog. But you'll notice how it really does find the subject of the scene, which is the sculpture on the left side here. And it's not, it's kind of intertwining the fog properly. So it's doing a really good job. You can come in and override it with the depth slider. And I noticed the depth slider seems to be more nuanced, like just slight movements and it just moves it very slightly. Whereas before it kind of would just jump into the foreground and not be as a fine of adjust of an adjustment. So I found that works pretty good. So they've totally redone the Atmosphere AI, and I like it. I like it a lot. It's probably something I never used in the past, but I might consider using it now uh, because I like how it actually does find the subject um, and does kind of um, envelop the fog properly, more realistically, around and behind the subject. So that is new. Another thing that is new is they've given you the ability to clear the cache. If you've ever found that uh, Neo is running slow or it's freezing or it's crashing, uh, what you can do is go to Luminar Neo Preferences. Now on a Mac, it's called Settings and it's under the Luminar Neo menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And I'm pretty sure, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, pretty sure on a PC, it's, I know it's under the Edit menu, but I'm pretty sure it's called Preferences there. Either way, when you open that up, you'll notice at the very top there is the option to clear the cache. So if you have an issue with it running or anything, you can clear the cache here. You can see um, another thing I do is I have a huge preview cache uh, that seems to keep it running um, running well, you know, keeps it running quickly, and try that. So clear a cache if you're having an issue. That is new in Luminar Neo as well. Now, the last thing that is new is they've redone the export module. So if I go over and I click on export, you'll notice now there's some options called quick export. I could export as a JPEG with 100% quality, JPEG with 80% quality, a 16-bit TIFF, or an 8-bit TIFF. So all this is new, this quick export option here. In the past, that wasn't there. Another thing they've added is if you just go to New Export, and this is the typical export dialog that we had in previous versions of Neo, but if you go to Format, you'll notice now you have the option to export as a DNG. That is new. We weren't able to export as a DNG in the past, and that I like. I like that a lot because I'm often exporting as a DNG because I want to keep the raw format throughout my workflow and I'm taking the image into another app, Photoshop or maybe, or something to do some work and I want that raw format. So that is a welcome addition as well, in my view, uh, that DNG format. So that's what's new and exciting in this 
the latest version of Luminar Neo. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have more information about each of these. And um, that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.